Hey everybody, it's Pastor Jeff with this week's introduction to our discipleship discussions. Today we're going to focus on 1 John chapter 2 verses 1 and 2. And if you were with us on Sunday, you know that to look at the first two verses of chapter 2 really is to put into context the first 10 verses of chapter 1. You see, many theologians would agree that the first two verses of chapter 2 really belong as the crescendo or the capstone of chapter 1. But that being said, let's take a look at what we want to discuss this week. When we open up chapter 2, we see that the Apostle John, under the inspiration of God, says, quote, My little children, and we know what a sweet term of endearment, that this is a loving correspondence, a pastoral correspondence from one of God's to many of God's children. Now, with that said, and getting the feel and the warmth of this opening remark, let's look at what John says. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you will not sin. Well, let me just ask you to begin this week with a discussion around this opening verse. And let me give you a thought that you may not have had before. And I pray it will fuel faithful, heartfelt, life-changing discussion through the power of the Holy Spirit. Here's the question. Why is it that John is writing this sentence? Well, that's kind of a trick question because there's no need to guess. John tells us, I am writing these things so that you will not sin. So we know why John is writing. Here's the real question. Why not sin? Why is it important to John, thereby showing us that it's important to God himself, that we not sin? Have you ever thought about that? Now, we know sin is bad. Therefore, we know to sin is to do a bad thing. But I want to ask you if you've ever really done the soul searching, if you've ever searched the scriptures, if you know in your heart of hearts why it's important that we not sin. Think about it. I will say to you this, that there are a number of reasons, and I would like you to discuss this in a way that I pray will lead to deeper Bible study. But let's just say this right on the surface. Number one, the reason why we're not to sin is because sins are damnable. That those that have unrepentant, uncleansed sin in their lives, those who are not saved, will spend eternity in a very real hell. But let's go beyond that. You see, this letter John is writing to the church, and by the opening of my dear or my little children, we know that he is at least hoping to be writing to the true church that receives the letter. At the same time, he knows that not everybody who calls themselves church, not everybody who is within the visible church, is going to be the true invisible church. So there is a, a component of this that says, I know that those who sin, who remain unrepentant and unredeemed, will end up in hell. But there's more to it than this. You see, we know from the scriptures that even when Christians sin, those that are saved, so now it's not a damnable offense if somebody is truly saved, but we do know that one can quench the Spirit of God. And so where an uncleansed, unforgiven sin is damnable, we also know that sins from within the Christian realm can interfere with our fellowship with God. And John clearly does not want any of the children of God to be out of healthy fellowship with God. Now, I'm going to give you one third one that I'd like you to really ponder and think about on a personal level. And that is what I call the pain price quotient of sin. And, and bear with me here for just a minute, but think about this. Every single thing that is paid for has a price. It makes sense. If it truly was paid for, that means it had to, by definition, have a price. There's no such thing as a free, paid-for transaction. I hope you can accept that. 
If so, then think about this. That you and I, Christian, were paid for. Jesus Christ was our propitiation. We were paid for, bought with a price, the scriptures say. And in this week, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, we see that Jesus the Christ was our propitiation. He, his crucified body, his tortured body on the cross, was the price paid for us. Consequently, that means that you can get a per sin cost associated with the torture, the crucifixion, the spilt blood of Jesus. And friends, I'll just tell you this, that if you know somebody who claims to be in Christ, somebody who calls themselves a Christian, who is flippant about their own sin or sin in general, those who think, well, hey, we've got grace, that's why Jesus went to the cross, right? And shows no sense of sensitivity to the price paid. I would tell you that that's somebody that should be in great, great concern for us and for themselves. For you see, if somebody has that flippant a response to their own sin, then I dare say that they don't understand what they claim to have. They certainly don't understand or appreciate the price that was paid. You see, friends, those of us that have been saved by grace, we have truly been saved by grace. And there is nothing that can take you out of the hands of Almighty God. But I would dare say this, that if you don't care about your sin, or you're flippant about your sin, or you think that this grace that was given is so cheap that you can wipe your feet on it with no sense of awe or reverence, I don't think you have what you think you have. I'm asking you to think about that. Have a discussion. Look closely at 1 John chapter 2, the first part of verse 1, and then ask yourself this. What is my relationship to sin? How do I understand this? Is it a simple do or don't? Or do I have an appreciation for why it is that God would say, do not sin? I pray this will lead to a healthy discussion. I look forward to hearing what God reveals to you. God bless you. I'll be praying for you. Amen and amen.